All right, so if you've ever used Scrapey before, you'll know that Scrapey comes with its own shell that you can use to interrogate websites and work out what bits you want to scrape before you actually get there and writing in your spider. So in this video, I'm going to show you maybe a few things you don't know about the shell that might help you understand it. So you know to get to the shell, you do type Scrapey shell and then you can type the URL of the website or if you don't want to, you can just hit enter and it's going to take you into the shell. Now from here, you can actually make a request to a website if you import uh, from Scrapey import request. This is going to give us access to the actual requests. So then we can do, uh, uh, let's do rec is equal to request and let's go https http bin dot org slash headers. And then if we type fetch our request, this is going to update the shell with this web page. So if you've already done it in one site and then maybe you want to move on and check out another site, you can keep the shell open just by doing that just right here. So now if we type in response, we see we have a 200 response and it says it here, crawled 200. So see the headers, you can do response.headers. Now these are the response headers from the server. Uh, these are the response headers from httpbin.org. Now, because this is the slash headers section on HTTP bin, I can actually see the headers that we sent by looking at the response. So I'm just going to do response.text. And you can see that here are the headers that we sent over. We are identifying our user agent as Scrapey 2.51. Now, if you needed to send more complicated headers through Scrapey Shell, this is the way to do it because you can actually pass in a request into this request here. In, sorry, you can actually pass in the headers into this response, this request here by typing headers and then creating a dictionary. So I'll just do um, header one and let's just give this a value of um, please sub there we go with two s's this time so if i close that out and hit enter and then do my fetch request again it's going to update it and we can then do response.text and over here you can see here's the headers i started to put in there it is if you wanted to update the user agent you would do it in the same way so we can say instead of these headers we can just do user dash agent and then let's just do fake user like that so now when i do my fetch request and i see the response our user agent has now changed to this this isn't the only way you can do the user agent if you actually exit the shell we can do it from here so if we were to do scrapey shell dash s you can then type in user underscore agent is equal to and then our fake user and then we can add in the website https org slash headers did I get that right yes I did so now we can do response.txt and you can see we've changed our user agent here so one cool thing that I'm going to show you that unfortunately really only works with uh, Linux and Mac not so well on Windows is you can actually pip install bpython. If you don't know what bpython is, it's going to change the way that your interactive Python shell works and it works directly with Scrapey. You don't have to do anything else. You just need to install it. So now if we go to Scrapey shell, we can see it's going to say welcome to bpython down here and it's going to give us access to just a little bit more, you know, easier to see things and, you know, it starts filling in things for you depending on what you've typed before. So let's get out of this and let's do Scrapey. Let's exit and let's get a website up. So let's do Scrapey shell, this website here, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. And that's going to give us some actual data to mess around with. So let's have a look at the response.headers now. We can see that we have the response from the server there. Now, if you wanted to see these a bit nicer, now as this is just Python, you could import pity print. So from preprint import, there it is, showing you all my secrets of what I typed beforehand. And then we can do pprint response.headers, and they just formats it a bit nicer, so you can see it there. So let's have a look. So you all know response.css. Let's search for all the A tags on this page. 
and we can see we get all the selectors here and now you can do dot get for the first one which is let's move this up here so you can see that we have the first link that it found on this page the reason why I like CSS selectors is I just find them easy to chain together. So if I was to do response.css and I know that the part of this starts with an ordered list and the class is row. And now if I do this, you can see we get our element and we can just simply ask for all of the list item tags that are under this element here. And we get all of the information that we could possibly want off this page without having to search for this list item class, which is long and wieldy, and I believe is a default bootstrap thing. So something that you're gonna come across quite often. So instead of messing around with this, you can just go up an element and then search there. So we could save this into a variable. So I'm gonna go back up one and we'll go home and we will save this into items. So now we can query with items as well. So we can do items.css and let's find all of the A in the items and let's do dot get for the first one. So that's the first A tag that it found within the items. So if we wanted to just get out the, uh, what do we got here? That's the href, maybe we would want to do that. You can do attrs then part in href dot get excuse me https there we go so there is the actual link to that so hopefully you guys are starting to get an idea of a few of the more a few of the things you can do in the scrapey shell the most useful obviously being for working out where the items are and the elements and which ones you want to scrape and what information you're going to get out with those with those selectors this is actually how i learned css selectors really in the first place um, it's also useful, you can check out your headers and you can see all of that stuff. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video guys. If you have, you're going to want to watch this one, more scrapey stuff. Cheers.